Welcome to Storytime with Pastor Steve. Today's story is Events of the Bible. This is written by Gloria Truitt and illustrated by Gordon Willman. Rain, rain, rain. God said to Noah, build an ark. Then when it's done, go find each animal and bird, then bring a pair of every kind. When Noah's family beasts and birds were safely in the ark, the thunder boomed and lightning striked through storm clouds thick and dark. The waters filled deep valleys and climbed up mountain heights while Noah's family waited out those 40 days and nights. At last, the sun came out and dried the waters and the mud, and everyone gave thanks to God who saved them from the... It rhymes with mud. It's got five letters beginning with F and ending with a D. Flood. Who saved them from the flood. Gibble Gabble, the story of a tower. Now following the flood, there was a large nomadic band of people who lived here and there just wandering across the land. They understood each other, for their language was the same. They sought a home of permanence upon a fertile plain. They, they set up camp and settled down to start a brand new life in the land of Shinar, where they'd all be free of strife. Now their ambition was to build a city great in size, and to a soaring tower that up to the clouds would rise. First they had to make the bricks. They laid them one by one. With pride the people watched the tower rising towards the sun. God was also watching, but with quite a different view. These people are too proud, God said. I'll take away their power. So he confused their speech so they could not complete their tower. Suddenly, the work went, workmen spoke in mixed up different ways. No longer could they understand a single word or phrase. The words they spoke were senseless, just some gibbly gabbly. So in despair, they left upon the tower called... Babel, the Tower of Babel. The Flight from Egypt In Egypt, many years ago, a pharaoh ruled the land. He kept the Israelites as slaves against the Lord's command. These slaves were fear of whippings, toiled long hours neath the sun, hauling bricks and blocks of stone. Their work was never done. Now Moses warned the Pharaoh, you'd be wise to hear my plea, for soon bad things will happen if my people aren't set free. The foolish Pharaoh shook his head and chose to not obey the words of Moses sent by God and said, these people stay. The Lord then turned the waters of the Nile River red and filled Egyptian homes with frogs across the land they spread the stubborn pharaoh still refused to let the hebrews go so god sent swarms of flies and gnats his power would be shown the egyptians suffered painful sores and saw their cattle die then the lord sent hail balls from and fire from the sky still the pharaoh stubbornly ignored the, law, the Lord's command, even after clouds of locusts swarmed across the land. Then three days of the darkest darkness fell so thick it could be felt, except in certain places where the Hebrew people dwelt. But still to God's almighty power, Pharaoh's eyes were blind. So God sent down a final plague to change the Pharaoh's mind. And in the land of Egypt there arose a terrible cry, 
as all the Egyptians' families saw their firstborn child, children die. But God passed over all the homes of every Israelite, for they had used the blood of lambs to mark their doors that night. "'Twas only after these ten plagues did Pharaoh finally see that God was greater than all else. At last he set them free. Then many thousand people formed a joyous caravan, and from the Pharaoh's country a long journey they began." The Bible's second book relates this happens now guess the name of this event it starts with an E and ends with an S it is called the Exodus a famous battle the Israelites joined long the Israelites journeyed along to find the promised land was just across the river and was very close at hand but Moses now was old and so he laid his hands upon his friend called Joshua and said now you must carry on then Joshua took seven priests and all his strong armed men and crossed the river Jordan to the land God promised them a hostile town stood in their way but they knew what to do by using the Lord's strategy, the town they overthrew. Seven times they marched around the walls of this great town, and when the priest blew trumpet blasts, the walls came tumbling down. Now Joshua was very brave, a warrior was he. He led the Hebrew people to a famous victory. The name of this great battle starts with J and ends with O, it's in the book of Joshua, the town of Jericho. A nine-foot giant. Young David was a shepherd who grew up to be a king. When he was just a lad, he killed a giant with his sling. The army of the Israelites stood back and watched the fight as David killed this Philistine who, soon, who stood nine feet in height. The army of the Philistines then dropped their swords and fled. While all the Israelites rejoiced, their enemy was dead. For Samuel will tell you of young David's bravery and how he killed the giant foe whose name began with a G. David and the giant called Goliath. There are so many more Bible stories. I encourage you to pick up either one of these arch books or pick up your Bible and start reading. There is a whole lot to learn about how God's power and might fulfills what he wants to have done.